Oh. Hang on. Something happened. Here. Oh, here. Oh, S1. Because you don't have a soft point. Come on. No, it switched to your graphics. On okay. the, it, they have your graphics up. Hey, I need weather too, guys. Weather too. There we go. Thank you. Yay. And I made, a, I made a pause, like a stop in the beginning, and then it's going to go. It's going to go mm -hmm. up and Tallahassee. Awesome. Our fish hawk and steen hatchy is where it's going. Can you guys get the... Are they able to... Oh, perfect. Thank you. I still can't see the top. Like I'm like, it's okay. Thanks for joining us on 10 Tampa Bay Plus. We've got your latest as of 11 a.m. from the National Hurricane Center. We've got Hurricane Idalia. All right, with winds of 85 miles per hour. So that's the change. It's gaining strength in the eastern Gulf of Mexico as a Category 1. Moving north at 14, that pressure continues to fall at 976 millibars. Still expected. No big changes in the track. Still expected to make a landfall in the Big Bend of Florida in the Steenhatchee Fishhawk area as we head into first thing tomorrow morning. And unfortunately, this looks like it's gonna to continue to gain steam as it moves toward land. So that will maximize its impact on land areas. And that means we're gonna have uh, big impacts far from the cone. So we're not even paying attention to the cone at this point. When you're talking a major hurricane here, a category three with 125 mile per hour sustained winds at landfall, it'll continue to move off to the northeast across southeast Georgia, and then up into the Carolinas as we head into later Wednesday and Thursday. So the worst weather for us here at home Still looks like it would be overnight tonight and Wednesday morning. All right, let's take a look at the big picture here. We've got tropical alerts up and down the coast through the, much of the state of Florida. So again, another reason it doesn't matter if you're in the cone or not at this point. This is a storm for all of us and we need to take it very seriously, especially if you're asked to evacuate you need to heed the warning. Notice all of the red shading. There's your hurricane warnings. That's for most of our viewing area. Tropical storm warnings all up and down I-95 up in the southeast Georgia. We take a look at the storm surge alerts. This is what I'm most concerned about with this storm. You see the pink shading here along our coastal counties and the Tampa Bay area as well as water will be piling up literally with nowhere to go. So what happens? It rises. And that's why we give a storm surge warning for these areas and a life threatening one at that because we've got a major hurricane really starting to wind up. This is a 3D perspective. Why don't you take a close look with me here and we'll go to a one minute composite. And if you notice, we do have an eye wall forming here. Uh, that's not good news. So it's churning across the hottest water in the Atlantic Basin called the loop current right now. We've got water temperatures close to 90 degrees. So it's drawing that energy into its center. And I, I'm expecting rapid intensification as it continues to move to the north as we head into the next 12 to 24 hours before landfall tomorrow morning. So just keep that in mind. We'll continue to watch it strengthen. We have to heed the warning if we're along these coastal areas. As we look at the wind field, you can see what's happening. You've got that counterclockwise flow around a developing major hurricane. So see that southwest flow? That's when we're gonna start to see problems here at home. So if you look at the timing, that would be as we head into midnight. The wind field where you see the yellow, that's where we could have some power outages and some of the higher wind gusts, okay? The hurricane part of the storm is the little red area. Likely the hurricane sustained winds are only gonna be in an area of about 10 to 15 miles from the center. So that's a little bit of good news there. But the bad news is we're going to see a lot of water that has nowhere to go but up. In fact, as it makes landfall near Steenhatchee in the Fishhawk area, you can see that wall of water and wind continues to move off to the northeast by late tonight and tomorrow. Here's what it looks like on future cast. And you can see here, here's Tampa, Hillsborough County, Pinellas County. We're watching Pasco County. And we are going to see some bands of heavier rain develop this afternoon, especially by late day. So we've got to be extra careful. If you have errands, you have to tidy up the yard. Now's the time to do it because by late afternoon, we do not want to be out and about as we start to see those tropical bands really starting to wrap up around the center. And you can see the eye 
forming just off to the east of Hillsborough and Pinellas County as we head into about 1 a.m. So that's when we're really going to start to see the water pile up, the storm surge, and in some of those bands, some isolated tornadoes. So again, as we head toward the midnight hour, some of the worst weather, and that will continue into early tomorrow morning as the tropical bands continue to swirl toward the center of this major hurricane. And if you look closely, you can see the landfall there, right there. Let's see the timing here. As we go into 930 tomorrow morning, there's the landfall in the Big Bend of Florida. And we're watching, unfortunately, Dixie and Levy County uh, getting the worst of it. I know we have a lot of kids, a lot of concerned parents about their kids in Tallahassee out there. Well, Tallahassee's not on the front right quadrant, and yes, they'll have some significant wind up in Tallahassee. I'm most concerned about power outages at this point, but it looks like the worst of the wind in that surge will stay to the front right, to the north and northeast of the center. That does not include Tallahassee, so just keep that in mind. So some good news for the kids and the parents there. As we take a look, though, here at home, we're looking for some better weather, right? Well, by tomorrow afternoon, okay, we'll have our hurricane continue as a Category 1 crossing Interstate 10, and with that, taking most of the heavier rain and the wind with it. That's tomorrow afternoon. So we've got a long way to go. Our weather team's here for you, keeping your family informed, prepared, connected, and I added calm and safe as well. One thing to note with some of these tropical bands, we talked about the surge and the wind. Okay, the primary threat with those isolated tornadoes would start to increase by late day and this evening. So the Storm Prediction Center has us in a two, a level two out of five for that severe weather risk, okay? So that means we've got to really pay attention, have your 10 Tampa Bay weather app, have it handy, enable those notifications. Let's go county by county. Now the Nature Coast, all along we've said since last week, this would be the area that I'm most concerned about, and it's the surge. Okay, the surge coming in between two and 8 a.m. as it peaks, eight to 12 feet, and again, that's water 12 feet above where it should be, above the sea level, okay? And then on top of that, churning waves. So. Uh, got to get out of there if you're asked to evacuate, especially off to the areas of east, okay? We're watching I-19, uh, Highway 19, and we're watching areas to the west of Highway 19 and just to the east. Uh, we got to watch very carefully. As we look at the winds, 50 to 70 with gusts of 80, they would peak from midnight to noon tomorrow. Farther south, we've got Clearwater. We're watching Tarpon Springs, St. Pete, Carrollwood, Brandon, Riverview. All right, here's what we got. We got the worst of the winds coming tonight, 10 o'clock to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, 50 to 75 mile per hour winds. Now it's going to be mainly strong tropical storm force winds, but occasional gusts to tornado, uh, occasional uh, gusts to hurricane force. And we still have to watch that isolated tornado threat, especially this evening. And as we look at the winds, they again peaking out late tonight, mainly after midnight through 10 a.m. Wednesday, storm surge of four to seven feet. Don't want to leave out our friends in Manatee and Sarasota County. It, it's a big storm. Two to four foot surge peaking between midnight and 5 a.m. with those wind speeds still at times gusting to 70. And then inland areas as well. You could have some power outages. So this does include Avon Park, Lake Wales, and Lakeland. Tuesday, 7 o'clock. That's tonight, 7 o'clock to tomorrow, Wednesday at 7 a.m. with 30 to 60 mile per hour winds with two to four inches of rain. Seven day forecast. Here we go. Bands of afternoon rain. They're on the way. And if you've been outside, you see the dense overcast coming in, okay? The canopy of clouds, we call it, and it will give way to some showers and storms to finish the day. We will watch the tornado threat increase by late day with that high of 91. Big rains coming in and the wind, the worst of the storm tonight and Wednesday morning. Conditions will start to improve after the noon hour Wednesday with that high of 87. Good news Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will start to slowly dry out. More sunshine, less rain, and getting ready for a much quieter Labor Day weekend. Of course, stay with us here. We've got you covered on air, online, keeping your family informed, prepared, and connected.